Ciao, my name is Umberto Mucci and this is with Italia News, a podcast about Italy during coronavirus times. Today is Monday, March 7, 2022. Dear friends, yesterday a small and yet remarkable thing happened to me. I was watching a news program here in Italy, they all last 30 minutes, uh, we call them telegiornale. At the end of this news, quite distressed by the news and especially by the images coming from Ukraine, I realized that in the whole news, there was not even a single news related to COVID. It had been more than two years since this, this had happened, and yet there was nothing to be happy for. Yes, COVID is strongly slowing down, but it's still out there. Plus, there's a huge water, less than three hours flight distance from here. But it was remarkable. <clears throat> the curves of new infections, admissions to COVID wards and intensive care units and even deaths continue to fall in Italy. But the speed at which they fall is slowing down compared to recent weeks. By now all regions have white zone numbers, but the color system will be eliminated in Italy on April 1st. Besides, new statistics on coronavirus infection in Italy have been published and they are quite important. 42% of COVID-19 cases in Italy since the start of the pandemic, 42% were diagnosed in the only January this year alone due to the pre predominance of the Omicron variant. 4.5 million out of the nearly 11 million cases. <clears throat> As for deaths, 53% of deaths by COVID occurred in 2020, 41% in 2021 and 6% in January 2022. To date, COVID has killed more than 155,000 Italians. In 2021, 709,000 people died in Italy, not just of COVID, of course, 37,000 fewer than in 2020, but 63,000 more than the average between 2015 and 2019. In 2020, 746,000 people had died, just over 100,000 more than the average of the previous five years, the highest in 2020, the highest figure ever recorded in Italy since the Second World War. <clears throat> the arrival in Italy of refugees from Ukraine is increasing. At the moment, there are about 3,000 a day, <clears throat> but this number is destined to grow further. They are already 10,000 here, almost all women and children. The head of the civil protection, the Italian FEMA, has appointed commissioners the presence of the regions who have asked the government to involve the army for border controls, certainly not to stop those fleeing from the bombs, but to help with health controls. The Italian government is counting on the extraordinary network of reception that sees Italy as a protagonist, also thanks to the Ukrainian who already live here, 248,000, of which 190,000 are women. And the government has also provided for the inclusion of children and young people in the Italian schools. But it is also necessary to deal with the pandemic in order not to risk a new health emergency. In Ukraine, only 35% of the inhabitants have completed the vaccination cycle and pediatric vaccinations are also very little widespread. Those who arrive in Italy from Ukraine must take a diagnostic test within 48 hours of entry into Italy, if not done at the time of entry into national borders. <clears throat> Positives and their contacts will go into quarantine and be managed according to current regulations. The regions must also offer vaccination to all those who arrive and have not received administrations or otherwise have not completed the cycle. And in theory, in Italy, there is a vaccination requirement for those over 50 years, which applies to both Italians and foreigners. The delicacy of the situation will be managed by the regions as best as possible. It is certainly not an easy situation. But protections against other diseases are also low in Ukraine. <clears throat> Recently, there have been large outbreaks of measles and especially polio last year, a disease that has now disappeared from our country. For this reason, the Italian regions will have to monitor whether those who arrive of any age are covered against measles, mumps, rubella, polio, diphtheria, tetanus, whooping cough, and so on, and to propose the missing vaccinations. Italy, Italy has a solid and successful history of welcoming Ukrainian children. You gotta know that in 35 years, Italy has hosted 500,000 Ukrainian and Belarusian children to decontaminate them from radiation after the Chernobyl accident in 1986. <clears throat> Today, those children from war zones call, call Italian families are asking for help. <clears throat> The one between Italy and Ukraine is the biggest humanitarian bridge in the history of our country. 
The periods of radioactive decontamination of the Chernobyl years have been transformed into periods of rehabilitation, not only of health, but also of affection. It took only 40 days of uncontaminated air and the Italian sea for the level of radio radioactivity in children to drop by more than 60% back in those years. <coughs> it is why Italian journalists sent to Ukraine always find someone who answers their questions in Italian and never fails to thank Italy. In the meantime, around 500 doctors, nurses and healthcare workers have responded to a call from Italy's, Italy's central Lazio region around Rome, <coughs> seeking to recruit medical staff to help people affected by the war in Ukraine, in the areas affected by the conflict, as well as in neighboring countries. Among the 500 medics in Lazio who signed up were 172 pediatricians. <coughs> When the pandemic arrived, Italy <coughs> discovered that its national pandemic emergency plan had not been updated for years and was therefore almost unusual. Today that Russia is bombing nuclear power plants in, in Ukraine, remembering also the danger we experienced here in Italy after Chernobyl and considering that there are nuclear power plants in France a few kilometers from the border with Italy, we discovered that at least our national plan of protective measures against radiological emergencies is updated. It was written in 1996, then rewritten re in 2010, but every three years it is checked and updated again. <coughs> Obviously, we all hope that we will never have to use it, also because there is a strong doubt if the necessary protective equipment to be quickly distributed to the whole population is available. Masks and other pandemic devices were not. As mentioned in the last videos, the Russian invasion in Ukraine has completely changed in just 10 days the energy policy of Europe and in particular that of Italy. Italy is gearing up to prepare the replace the to replace the 48% share of Russian gas we use. We have resources to get to the end of the summer, even if tomorrow Russia decides not to send any more. And in these 12 days since the beginning of the war, it has already reduced by 10% the amount of gas sent to Europe. <coughs> From this point of view, <coughs> Italy is the country that is better off in Europe. Deposits are currently full of, on average in the EU at 29%, with a peak in Italy at 39%. One third of the energy, energy consumed in Italy is electricity, and of this third, about 60% is produced by gas, which also satisfies other needs in the country. The government is quickly preparing a new national energy security plan that will increase the number of suppliers, detaching us from the main one, the Russian one, with both immediate and medium term actions. In addition, it seems that everyone in Europe has understood that it is important to negotiate prices and contracts at European level and not each country on its own. The lessons of vaccines was useful in this because it was Europe to negotiate and then redistribute vaccines to its members and this has guaranteed low prices and more than sufficient supplies for everybody. But gas is not the only com commodity at risk from the war. The, F the FAO index of food prices in February reached an all-time record, surpassing the previous one of 2011 by three points and is up 3.9% compared to January and 20.7% on an annual basis. And for some basic necessities, prices run even faster on the double push of energy increases and the war. Within a week, the price of wheat has increased by 38.6%, that of corn by 17%, and that of soybeans by 6%. The war is a serious problem that adds to the problems that already existed in Italy, because we depend on foreign countries for 64% of our wheat supplies. In the last 10 years, Italian corn production has been reduced by almost a third and wheat production by 20%, but it is the entire European agricultural policy that has reduced the amount of land to be cultivated in recent years. And the same is expected for the future. Putting these terrible increases in raw materials together with increases in energy and packaging, which date back to before the war, Dozens of Italian bakeries and pastry shops are at risk of closure. <clears throat> now, you know, when I can, I try to end this video with the good news. Here's the one for today. Since Italy relaxed entry restrictions for travelers originating outside the European Union on March 1st, a travel experts site have noted an incredible 1300% year-over-year increase in searches for enter Italy from USA. Americans and other non-EU travelers are allowed to enter Italy for tourism without mandatory quarantine and only a standard green pass will be needed, either a vaccination certificate, a recovery certificate or a negative test result. 
The website also reviewed average monthly flight search volumes recorded over the last of the over the past year to identify which Italian destinations specifically were most sold uh, sought after by Americans. Here are the top twenty top ten. Amalfi in Campania, Florence in Tuscany, Milan in Lombardy, Lake Como in Lombardy, Positano in Campania, Palermo in Sicily, Rome in Lazio, Venice in Veneto, Naples in Campania, Cinque Terre in Liguria. What about you? What are you waiting for? We, we, we are waiting for you. So it's all for today, it's all for now. Please stay safe, please, please take care. My name is Umberto Mucci, I'll see you next uh, Thursday. This was with Italia News. Uh, ciao from Rome.